<laughs> Every time I see you, I think I'm in trouble sometimes. <laughs> wow, look at them with the fresh cut. This is wow, wow. Man. Wow, looking good, Ben. Between uh, who got the haircut? Uh, who was it earlier this year? Yes, Ben Briner. Must be something in the um, in the water. All right, hope everybody's having a good week. Good to see everyone. Um, before I get started, just wanted to congratulate our women's soccer team and Shelly and Jamie Smith on the fantastic win over the Tar Heels last week in Chapel Hill. That was uh, awesome. It gave us some great news uh, while we were uh, out in Missouri and wanted to wish, wish them luck uh, this weekend as they travel out to Los Angeles to play Hofstra. So excited for them and, and uh, love what their program is about. And, and uh, best of luck to them out on the West Coast this week. Uh, got a big challenge uh, on our hands with a really, really, really good um, Auburn team, uh, you turn on the tape, it's, I mean, physical. Our physicality jumps out everywhere uh, on all three phases. Uh, they play physical offensively. I mean, they're explosive. We all know about the uh, Bigsby, the running back, but, you know, they've got a group of running backs that can run the football. They've got a big physical offensive line. They've get, they're deep at tight end. They use multiple tight ends. Um, the, the wide receiver core is fantastic guys with speed. And, uh, I mean, there's a backup there that we were trying like heck to get at Oklahoma uh, as a receiver and he's a backup for him right now. So really, really talented wide receivers. Uh, hate to hear the news on Bo Nick. Certainly uh, thoughts and prayers are with him and, and wish him a speedy recovery. What a competitor and, and warrior that is. I mean, you can watch the tape of the game from last Saturday and, and uh, see him limping around uh, for a, a strong portion of the game, trying to fight through that injury. Uh, so says everything about what he's about and uh, so much respect for his competitive spirit. And wish him well uh, defensively, uh, same thing, physical and, and dominant. We've got a corner that's most likely going to be a first round draft pick, really good front seven, physicality, athleticism, speed across the defense and then on special teams, extremely well coached, physical on special teams as well and, and uh, really explosive in, in there. You can see they coach it well, they work hard at it, it shows on video. So we've got a, got a big challenge on our hands uh, facing this bunch, obviously coming off a tough second half against Mississippi State uh, the other day. Uh, they looked as good as any team in the country in the first half and, and then uh, momentum kind of flipped on them a little bit. The quarterback got banged up. Uh, but we know we're in for a big challenge on Saturday night. Uh, the quarterback that we expect to play, uh, obviously he's played reps this season. He's played reps against this program uh, in the past, and, and he's a talented guy as well. So it's not like they're putting in uh, some freshman that, that hasn't played. This guy's got meaningful reps. So we'll, we got a big challenge in our hands, but our guys are excited about the opportunity to go compete again. Had a really good practice this morning, and, and uh, we were a, um, you know, a disappointed bunch, obviously, on Saturday night with the way we played, uh, but came right back to work on Sunday like we always do after a win, after a loss. We tell the truth to each other. We correct and uh, take the day off on Monday, the players do, and then we come back in here, and today was fantastic meetings and, and practice. Uh, we certainly are excited about the opportunity to be back home in williams Bryce Stadium. Um, we uh, certainly feed off our fans' energy, and we're going to need a rocking williams Bryce Stadium on Saturday night. Um, you know, I hope our fans can appreciate the, the passion that our players play with and the competitive spirit that they play with. It, it may not always be pretty, but you can't question how uh, passionate we play for each other and how much the guys on our team care for each other and, and, uh, and love each other. So we'll... Uh, we, we need that Saturday night, national television, prime time, uh, ESPN, going to be an awesome environment to showcase our program and, and this university and, 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 this, and williams Bryce Stadium. So looking forward to that opportunity. And with that, I will be glad to answer any questions. Shane, just grading the Missouri tape and, and looking at their defense, it just I know they were blitzing a lot, but the amount of free rushers coming at Jason just on a whole lot of the game. What did you guys see as the main cause of that, and how do you plan to alleviate that? Yeah, um, it happened too much the other night, just to be honest. Um, you know, I'm just thinking back through them. One time was a, a little bit of a different front they lined up in where they 
overloaded the right side, that they brought a guy free off the left side that should have been picked up. Um, it, it was just uh, a look that, that was a little bit new that uh, the running back in that particular instance um, had his eyes over there to the right, at a, a rusher he was responsible for, and they brought the guy from the left. Uh, one time um, was or one time was just a, a uh, missed assignment uh, with the left guard where we turned a rusher free and um, uh, on a on a drop back pass. You know, I wish I had a better explanation. It was just a mistake by one of our offensive linemen on that. He should have been out there picking that guy up. I mean, that's a basic thing that we should have had no issue with. Another one was on a running play where we didn't block the linebacker. That was just an instance where um, the tackle tight end guessed wrong, had an idea of what they thought might be happening that the defense was doing based on the way they lined up, which they weren't necessarily far off, but they guessed wrong on that one and, and uh, shouldn't happen. So we go back to work and get it corrected. And a uh, couple of the runs, you could say that, you know, they were flying their defensive ends up the field. And one time we ran, I think, the counter play into a defensive end just screaming up the field. And that's one, you tip your cap to them. They had the chalk last. And, and uh, that's not the greatest play if they're playing it that way. Uh, so you go back, you look at the things they did. Certainly Auburn's going to look at it and copy things that Missouri did, just like Missouri copied things that other people did. And you always try and stay ahead and, and just coach it better. But that's one thing, David, that we talked about as a staff yesterday, offensively and defensively, is some of those mistakes that happened on Saturday night were, were not new things that we had in. It was things that we've been doing and, and making sure that we're constantly coaching and, and uh, reviewing uh, everything. So hope that answers your question. It was too much, but, uh, you know, give Missouri some credit for some of them, and then we just got to do a better job of coaching so our guys are prepared for every look that they could potentially see uh, during the game. Shane, obviously the Virginia Tech job opened up this morning. I know, you know, we know your history, your dad's history there and, and your time there. Just wanted to ask you where you stand in relation to that and, and as the head coach at South Carolina right now too. Yeah, uh, certainly you hate to ever see anyone uh, lose their job. Uh, so... Uh, tough from that standpoint. Obviously, I love Virginia Tech. I moved there when I was 10 years old. I, I went to high school there. I went to college there. Uh, I coached there. My parents still live there. So I have special memories of uh, uh, my time in Blacksburg, and, and that'll always be you know special to me. But uh, this is where I want to be. When I said this was my dream job, uh, I wasn't just saying that to make it sound cool in a press conference or, or to get the job. This is where my wife and I and my family want to be. Uh, we didn't put that sign up over there in williams Bryce Stadium that said, welcome home, just because it was trendy and a slogan. This is home uh, for me. And uh, I want to be the head football coach here at South Carolina. I love working with or working for Ray Tanner and, and Chance Miller. They are fantastic, and we have a, an amazing relationship. Um, I love this state. I want to live in this state. I love this city. I want to be living this city. I told our team a couple weeks ago, my son Hunter, he's in second grade, I guess. I want him to graduate high school from, you know, here in Columbia. And, and this is where I want to be. We're, we're just getting started. Uh, recruiting is going amazingly uh, well. There's a lot of energy about this program right now. There's a lot of excitement about this program right now. Uh, my goal is to bring an SEC championship here to Columbia, and we're just in the beginning stages um, of it. So, no, I'm the, I'm the head coach at, at South Carolina. I want to be the head coach at South Carolina. And, and, and then, you know, probably beyond any of that is we use the word love around here a lot, and I love coaching these – coaching these kids and uh, couldn't imagine uh, not coaching these guys and, and uh, love what they're about and, and love being their head football coach. Shane, obviously different coaching staff in comparison to last year, but what can these players take away from having the opportunity last year to go up against a guy like TJ Finley and as coaches, how much of that do you kind of pry and try to get information from them based on what they saw last year and in comparison to the short and limited time he has so far this season with Auburn. <clears throat> yeah, you get a, um, you know, you, they know what he's about, you know, I guess for the guys that were out there, two totally different teams, you know, with him being at LSU last year with uh, the 2020 Gamecocks and the 2021 Gamecocks, the scheme 
all that, but they certainly, from a physical standpoint, they know what he looks like in person. They know that he can throw the football. Obviously, Auburn thinks highly of him because there was a time this year where he was their starting quarterback, I guess, and then they ended up going back to uh, to uh, to Bo Nix. But you know, if anything, I think it's just the the seeing him out there on the field for the first time won't be the first time they seem. I mean, I was at Mississippi State and we played against LSU and Jamarcus Russell and the guy looks like Jamarcus Russell out there. I mean, I've never seen him in person, but I mean, you turn on the video and and you see how big he is. He got in there, I think, for two plays the other day against Mississippi State at the end of the game. Uh, there's video that you can draw on from earlier this season when he played as well. So we'll look at that as coaches and, and go back and kind of get a feel for him. And, and uh, you know, I think it's an advantage in some ways for us, but, you know, probably he would say the same thing too. I mean, he knows or is somewhat familiar with our personnel, I guess, also. But again, with, with him, I mean, it all, he's got 10 really good guys around him as well. And it starts with that offensive line and, and that, the, the group of running backs and, and tight ends and receivers they have out there also. Coach, you hear players all the time say, we just have to drown out the noise. We heard your players say it earlier today. For you personally, how do you drown out the noise? And is that even possible when you're the head coach of an SEC program? <laughs> um, good question. Uh, probably easier than you think, just because we're so insulated in this building in a lot of ways. Uh, um you know, I, I wake up early in the morning. My wife and kids are asleep. It's dark. I come into this facility. I'm here all day. I go home at night. It's dark. Uh, and during the day, all I'm doing in here is trying to recruit and and um, and and get this team prepared to play on that particular week, that Saturday, uh, the upcoming Saturday. Uh, I, I do. It's not like after we lost to Missouri that as soon as I got on the bus, I immediately went to Twitter to see what they were saying about me. I didn't, I can assure you that. I uh, immediately pulled out my iPad and bust back to St. Louis and, and watched the game on my iPad and tried to figure out what went wrong and, and how to get us better for sure. But I think it would be naive for me to say that you're not. I mean, our players, they walk out of here at noon each day and, and they go to class and they're around Columbia and they're on social media and things like that. So I try and say, somewhat you know um in tune with maybe what the narrative is out there but as far as me you know listening to it if, if i'm letting that influence what i'm doing then i'm not doing the best job for the young men in this program if that makes sense shane obviously mike bobo likes to run the ball a lot what have you seen from auburn in the run game specifically and how big of a test is that coming off that missouri game to improve yeah really big um you know the, it, it starts with the run and you go back to when this staff was at boise state they used multiple tight ends they ran the football uh that's what mike likes to do you turn on the tape and and you see parts of Boise you see parts of Mike Bobo's offense and, and and whatnot you know when you go back to all the way to when you know Brian Harson was at uh, was at Texas and, and the style that Texas had so it all carries over but it, it starts with the run and and uh, I mean they're really 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 good and and really really uh, physical uh, they mix up the run game it's not like it's just one scheme that you see over and over, you've got to you got to be ready for a lot of it. You know, you got to be ready for inside zone. You got to be ready for some toss crack. You got to be ready for some outside zone. I mean, they do a they do a good job of uh, of mixing it up and and moving those tight ends around. You know, and getting them in different places and creating angles and leverage. So it's certainly a big challenge, and especially for our guys. I mean, they're they're built differently than what. Missouri is, you know, Beatty from Missouri, he, he, he's not the, the size necessarily of Bigsby and some of these running backs. And, and, you know, with Missouri, they had tight ends they played, but, you know, it was a little bit more spread out and, and some two by two sets. Whereas with Auburn, I mean, they may have three tight ends in there and they're lined up and it's old school downhill football. And uh, I like to think that we're, able, we're, we're like that a lot of ways as well. I think we're a physical football team. I think we were it a lot of times on Saturday night against Missouri, and, and that's what we've been preaching to our players this week is the, the physicality that it's going to take on Saturday night to uh, perform at a high level. Shane, what's your quarterback situation? Is Zeb healthy enough that maybe he can get some 
some time this week, or where do you stand on who's going to start? Yeah, uh, Jason will be the starter uh, again. You know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't pretty all the time on Saturday night, but Jason, you know, going back and looking at the tape, Jason did some good, a lot of good things, and uh, um, you know, we've got to continue to get him stepping up in the pocket and, and not always escaping to the left. You know, when he feels any kind of pressure and. And uh, that's been a, been a big point of emphasis for him. But he made some nice throws and did some good things for us down the stretch as well. Uh, Zeb is healthy. Zeb was healthy last week. If we had felt like we needed to put Zeb in the game last week, we could have. Uh, so there's Jason. There's Zeb. Uh, Colton would be our number three, you know, quarterback this week. And and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. If you can get that one win over the next two weeks to become bowl eligible. What, how big would that be considering, you know, what you stepped into in this first year to get six wins and be bowl eligible? Yeah, um, you know, I would hope we could get find a way to get two, you know, down the stretch for sure. And, and right now our, our focus right now is nothing but Auburn, but in specifically let's have a great rest of the Tuesday and then let's worry about Wednesday morning tomorrow when they come back for practice. But, you know, obviously I think it would be – great for the young men in this program to to be able to um have that kind of season and be rewarded with a bowl game it's certainly from a from a uh developmental standpoint it would be huge for us as coaches because it gives you a kind of an extra spring practice in december um as well it'd be great for our fan base as well but you know regardless of what happens um regardless of what happens in regards to that you know i think We've done enough really good things this year where the direction of this program and where we're headed and the type of young man we have in this program and what we're about has, has been evident. And then obviously, you know, the opportunity to uh, continue to, to win football games and continue to advance would be would be great. But, you know, it's kind of like we talked about last week, Phil. We don't need to be thinking about bowl games. We need to think about Auburn and what we have to do as individuals to – as coaches and players to be at our very best this week. And, you know, if we perform our best and take care of business and the rest will take care of itself. Hey, Coach, facing another top 10 rushing attack in the SEC this week, how confident are you the defense can bounce back and have a better performance than they had against Mizzou? And then on the flip side, Zaquandre had another good game. Talk to us about what you've seen out of his progress this season. Yeah, uh, as far as our defense, I mean, it seems like the – it's story of uh, – I mean, it's SEC football. Every week it seems like you're getting ready to play uh, an explosive physical run game. I mean, you go back to, to Georgia and their backs, and then you got Kentucky and Rodriguez coming in here. And uh, who you got Vanderbilt, and they had gone for, I think, 200-plus yards on, Van on Stanford when we played them. And, and then you've got Florida and what they were able to do – or Tennessee and what they were able to do as a, with the running game. And, and then Florida and the way they ran the quarterback. And then last week with Beatty. And then this week with Bigsby and the rest of those running backs. So it's, it's certainly uh, – it's uh, that's SEC football, you know, for sure. So we've seen a lot of great running backs throughout the season. This is another uh, dynamic one that we're about to see that's a little bit of a different style than some of the other ones we've seen. But our guys have shown that they can stop the run. I mean, that's what Florida does. Florida was averaging seven yards a carry when they came in here, and we stopped the run not that night. And, and uh, we've got to be more consistent doing it than what we were against Missouri. We've got to be more consistent as a football team in all phases. Uh, than what we were against Missouri because we just we were just we were just too inconsistent the other night. Uh, but our, I know our guys can. It's going to take a great commitment to it. It's going to create great physicality and and uh, you know we've got a they, they've shown they can do it. And then in, as far as the Quandre goes, I uh, love what that kid's about. I mean he, he we made him a captain last week before the game. We we do game captains. We don't have we haven't voted on permanent captains yet, but he was a captain for us last week. And it's because of the way that he just he comes to work every day and he started the season and then uh didn't get the reps that he wanted uh as the season went on and early on and then just kept working and kept fighting and now you know, he's he's explosive, he's dynamic, he's great out of the backfield as you saw the other night and and you know what you're going to get each and every day with Zaquandre. It's going to be great energy and great, you know, competitive spirit in practice, uh, in, in, in games. He never, 
he never stops talking. I mean, that energy that he plays with, it's the same way out there on the practice field as well. He just he loves to compete and he loves the game of football. Shane, a two-parter for you. How much did you know about Damani Staley before you came here? Very little, um, honestly. I mean, I knew who he was just because living in Oklahoma, I told you guys, I mean, I recorded the coaches show every Sunday and, and watched it for the last 10 years. So, I mean, I knew about the players from that standpoint, but I didn't really know much about Damani other than just seeing him on highlights and obviously familiar with the last name uh, from – uh, no, with Deuce, uh, but as far as him as a person or him as a player, I didn't know much. And then just how would you judge his performance this year? I mean, you know, based on kind of his the stats and everything that he had before. The I game. think he's been awesome. I mean, he's just so steady, and he hardly says a word. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many words that he and I have communicated with each other since I've been here. I mean, and don't take that the wrong way, but he just – and that's all the players as well. He just – he doesn't say a whole lot, but he's just steady and consistent, and he's made – I think I said it on the teleconference the other night. He's just made so many plays this year. The, the interception return for a touchdown against ECU, the, the, the uh, fourth and one stop against Florida. He had a huge play in the Vanderbilt game on their, on their last drive. To, I think he was a tackle for loss in the backfield, if I'm not mistaken, down there in the red zone. Um, you know, he added on on a pressure the other night and, and got a sack. So he's just steady, he prepares, and, and uh, really happy for him and, and the, the year that he's having for sure because he's certainly – certainly earned it and he's prepared and put himself in 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 that position you joked a couple of weeks ago before jason's first start that about 80 i think it was 87 percent of the balls go in ej's direction <laughs> um that hadn't been quite that high a percentage is, is it are you surprised by that is it because ej hasn't been able to get open or what what are you what have you seen there from that and and um you know he how have you gotten him on, on the field more? It was him and Josh Van playing the same position for a while. But how have you gone about getting him on the field more? Yeah, uh, as far as, you know, surprised, maybe. EJ may be mad at Jason that he hasn't thrown in the ball. I don't know. Uh, it hasn't been for a lack of trying. A lot of that's the defense, too. And, and it's not as simple. You know, everybody says, we got to get Jaheim Bell the ball, and we got to get Josh Van the ball, and we got to get EJ the ball. And it's not as simple as just calling a play and telling the quarterback, throw it to EJ. I mean, it's – I wish we could get defenses to line up exactly like we wanted them to. And don't get me wrong. I mean, that's part of game planning and, and being able to get easy touches for guys uh, on the perimeter and things like that. We do that all the time with Jaheim and Juju. But it's not as simple as just, you know, drop back and we guarantee you this guy's going to be open. You don't know what coverage they're going to be in and you don't know what kind of pressure they're going to bring that the quarterback may have to go somewhere else with the ball. You know, that ball that – was I guess it was the other night we tried to throw it to EJ. I think it was EJ on that. Um, maybe been Josh. I'm sorry, but we tried to throw the ball to EJ some, and and uh, it's not for a lack of necessarily trying. It's just kind of what the defense gives you and where Jason's supposed to you know go with the ball. But EJ's touches are coming. He's a weapon. And then in regards to just getting him on the field more, it's it's uh, just those guys being a little bit more flexible and Josh being able to play a couple different positions within our offense, which allows EJ to be on the field along with Josh or Xavier Leggett or DK or uh, Marion Brown or, or whoever it might be. Uh, so like I talked about before, early on, Jay's, excuse me, EJ and uh, Josh were basically the same position on offense. Now uh, they're playing a couple multiple positions where we're able to you know, uh, get those guys on the field at the same time. Shane, you kind of touched on Z, but as far as how he and Kevin kind of complement each other, it seems like they've kind of gotten at least some kind of rhythm the last mm -hmm. few weeks. Just what have you seen from those guys, and, and how do you feel like you guys can kind of use those guys as a weapon going forward to, to get the running game going? And yeah, no, I mean, it it, um, it goes back. I think I told you guys after spring practice where we sat down as an offense and talked about who are our top playmakers on this offense. And, and even though Kevin really didn't do anything in the springtime, you knew based off last year he was going to be one along with Z White and Marshawn, and then Juju, Juju came along. They certainly they complement each other well. Marshawn did some really nice things the other night as well. We know what Juju can do, but certainly uh, you know Kevin's gaining more and more confidence as the year goes on. He's getting more and more healthy as the year goes on. Zaquandre uh, continues to produce at a high level, so. Um, getting those guys both involved and, and keeping Marshawn involved and finding ways to get Juju touches is, is a challenge each week, but something that we're, uh, that we're excited to do. And, 
was gonna say we kind of, we've kind of asked you this about this before, but as far as Jason and handling, you know, the last whatever two months, two plus months, you know, when you look at how he's handled, you know, losing out of quarterback competition twice mm-hmm. and getting his opportunity, just what can you say about his character and how he's handled that situation and and you know you know still come bringing it every day in practice and being there and being uh, you know making the chance at making good on his opportunities. Yeah, I think it's a great lesson for all of us. Just you know keep your head down and and um, and just continue to continue to work um that's him i mean he's steady and and didn't let didn't let uh the circumstances dictate you know how he was going to respond he just continued to prepare to be the starting quarterback and was super supportive of those other guys and, and didn't sit around and feel sorry for himself and and mope he didn't come in my office and and want to complain about why he's not getting the opportunity just he, he handled it the right way, and he was a great teammate, and he continued to be appreciative for the opportunity he had here and continued to, to work. And uh, I think he's handled it – you know, he's handled it great. You worry a little bit about everything after the Florida game, and nobody knows who he is, and all of a sudden you got a week of he's sky high, and, and I thought he handled it well and, and had a good week of practice last week, and, and he, uh, he made some really um, amazing throws this morning in practice as well. So you hope – he continues to gain more and more confidence. He's got an SEC home start under his belt. He's got an SEC road start under his belt. And, and he continues to grow into the position uh, as well. Shane, we know it's not uncommon for coaches to hop around or you know people to have different relationships. Someone coached here, go there. But you know, with a guy like Mike Bobo, having come in here, having interviewed him for that position, does it give you any type of, I want to say advantage, but knowing obviously what he likes to do, I mean, we know that he likes to run the football, but is there, is there anything that you guys can take away from that that can help you going into a game like this week? Yeah, I think maybe, um, you know, some familiarity, but every team is every team is different. And, and, you know, I know what Mike's about having, you know, not just from his time here, but when he was at – Georgia as the offensive coordinator and I was here as an assistant coach on defense and you know you know what he's about and you know what he believes in and and certainly um, you know he's working for a offensive head coach uh, whose background is offense uh, as well so it's a great blend of Boise and, and Mike Bobo's uh, stuff as well and and uh, Mike's a Mike's a great coach and and uh, you know at the end of the day though it gets down to the players on the field and, and our 11 and their 11 uh, executing at, uh, at high levels. But I don't know. I mean, you, there's certainly, you know, familiarity with things he likes to do and things like that. But it's probably a wash. I mean, he knows our personnel and a lot of that as well. Um, so I don't know if it's probably not a whole lot of stock you could put into it. Short answer. Shane, along those same lines, is there any benefit at all to even turning on the tape from the Auburn game last year and saying to these guys, hey, you came out on top in, in this place against this team just a year ago, even though the circumstances are completely changed? Um, I don't think so. I mean, it's nothing that I'm going to show the team. I, I am In our team meeting Sunday and in our team meeting this morning, I didn't even mention last year's game. I mean, I think our guys know. I remember watching it on television, and and it's it's two completely different coaching staffs. It's different coordinators all over the field. Uh, certainly, they're familiar with the personnel, and uh, there's great confidence, probably, in the sense that you know how we handled business or how they handled business last year and won the football game. And and I remember watching it as a back and forth game, and um, you know, there's no. I think Shy Smith had a ton of catches that day and went back and forth with our JC and the receiver from Auburn, I think, went back and forth. I mean, those guys, I remember watching that. Um, that wasn't – those guys aren't here. But certainly I think you can, you know, look back at last year and it's not totally new the first time you see, you know, them come out of the tunnel down there in their end zone and things like that. But um, there's not a whole lot that you can take from, from, uh, from last year's game. And that's not just with Auburn. I mean, that's – been throughout the year. I mean, I don't think there's a single game really that I went back myself. I'm not saying the coordinators haven't, but a game where I went back and watched South Carolina versus whatever opponent from last year. Uh, and it's definitely not anything that I've talked to the team about. Thank you. 
you might have mentioned this at some point earlier in the year, so I apologize if you did. But what is Jason's eligibility status? Does he have? He's got another year. He does have another year. Yep. Have you guys talked about the, his his future plans? I mean, is he definitely deciding to come back for another year? I don't want to speak for him based on my conversations with him, though. I think he would like to come back, you know, for another year. Um, you know, that's – we've got a – it's it's um, tricky is not to worry, but it's certainly a, a unique situation in that you've got a lot of guys uh, that are super seniors that can't come back. I shouldn't say a lot, very few. Uh, and then you've got a group of guys that are technically seniors that may or may not come back. But Jason has another year. Uh, I believe he plans on you know coming back. But all those uh, all those conversations are conversations that you know we'll sit down after the season and, and talk with those guys, not just Jason, but. But uh, a lot of those guys that are in that situation certainly will have players weigh in NFL opportunities and, and things like that, like you always do. And uh, we'll sit down with all of them and help them make the best decision for, uh, for them and for our program as well. All right, y'all have a great week. Thank you.